In Creo Parametric 8.0, there are numerous enhancements, and in this video, we are going to look at five of them. First, creating a multi-hole feature. I'm going to click on the hole command, and first off, there's a lot different about the interface now. You'll notice that there is a tab that opens up automatically. Also, it is no longer overlapping on the model tree. I'm going to have an entire video on user interface changes. But here we have a type drop-down list, and a new choice in here is sketched. And so when I click on that, we can pick on the surface that we want to sketch on. And for the first one, I'm just going to drop in a couple of holes. Let's create them on here. And for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not going to dimension them, but here you can see we are creating two holes. And let me just configure them a little bit. Everything else here looks good. Right now, you can see that we are using an internal section for the sketch. Of course, you can pick a pre-existing section. And right now, we are placing them on points. But there are a couple of other different choices in here. Let me hit the check mark to complete this one. Let's create another set of holes. And once again, I will go to the sketched option. And let's define a sketch on the same surface. Let me... Then, instead of dropping in a few points like we have over here, I'm going to sketch in a rectangle. So let's make a rectangle, make it about yay big. Let's throw in some dimensions. And let's call this one 12. Let's also do from here to here. And then make that one 12 as well. So that way, if the block changes size, then the rectangle will change size as well. Now when I hit the check mark, we are getting points located at the vertices of those sketched lines. And once again, let me configure the depth option. Also, you'll notice that the buttons on the dashboard look a little bit different. They are bigger, more prominent to draw your attention to them. Let me grab a bigger size over here. And let's do our countersink, counter board, oops, there we go. And so you can see how we're creating them in here. Now another button that you have here allows you to place the holes on the midpoints of the sketched lines as well. So I'm happy with that. Let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And so in that way, we are getting multiple holes created within a single feature. Second, in sheet metal mode, you can now use the flat wall tool to place walls on multiple edges. So let me select an edge over here. I will hold down the control key and select this edge as well. So you can see that the placement tab opens up and we have our collector that allows us to select the multiple edges that we want to place the walls on in the model. Let me just grab one more over here. And so that way, we've got our different walls configured. And of course, they are controlled by a single height value. So as we drag one, the other ones are going to drag up and down as well. Let me go with the smaller value, seeing as I don't know how big that cut is inside of there. And so then we can hit the check mark. Now, there are a few other additional options that you get here when you are doing multi-walls. Let me switch over to a, another part model to show them to you. Here I have a sheet metal part. It has a sketch that is extruded. Once again, let's create a flat wall. And I will select one edge over here. Let me hold down the control key and grab another edge. We now have automatic mitering for those multiple walls that are created within the flat wall feature. Let's go to the miter cuts. Here's the option to create the miter cuts. If I uncheck that, well, we're going to end up with overlapping geometry, which would not be proper. And for the three bend corner relief type, here we have a drop down list with four different choices tangent, open, closed, and rip. Let's leave tangent. And the miter cut type is set to through all. We could change it to ob round, which in this particular case doesn't do anything. Or you could choose no gap, so it closes that up. 
let's change from tangent to open. And now let's take a look at the corner that we have. And with the open option, we can have no gap or you could choose here we have through all and then you can configure the size of the gap or here we have ob round, which in this case again won't make any kind of difference because of where the ob round would be placed. Let's go to the drop down list and change this to closed. So here we have closed with a miter, but you can also choose no gap. So at some point you would have to throw in some rips in different locations in order to be able to flatten this, but you do have the option to have a filled in corner. And also we have the rip option. And with the rip option right now, we're set to no gap, but you can change it to one of the other different options. And you have the ability if you have a gap to control the size of the gap. So that automatic miter option is now available to you when you are placing a flat wall on multiple edge references. Third, geodesic curves. Those are curves that have the shortest path, not a straight path. Here I have a part model. I use the warp tool in order to deform this surface. Let me show you that deformation. I will go to the analysis tab and then mesh surface and then pick this surface. So there you can see the topology of that particular surface. Now I want to create some curves between some points on the edges. So let's go to the datum overflow menu. Here we can create a curve through points. And first off, let's select points on opposite sides of each other. I will select one point and then hold down the control key and select the second point. So there you can see a preview of the curve initially. It is a straight line. On the ribbon and in the tab, you have the option to place the curve on a surface. You can also access that from the right mouse button. And once you say that you're going to place the curve on a surface, you need to select the surface that you want to use. And so now it is following the surface. But we also have an option for a geodesic curve. You can select that from the placement tab. Also, you have it right on the ribbon. So take a look at what happens to the curve when we make it geodesic. Now it is going the shortest distance, which instead of going right over the middle of the model, it's going around the side. That's good for the first curve. Now let's create a, another one and let's use the points going sort of like diagonal across. We'll go to datum, curve, curve through points again and select one point, hold down the control key and select a, another point. Let's put this on the surface. And again, you can see it taking sort of like a straight line path, but not the shortest path. So geodesic curve. And once again, it bends around going the side of that dimple. All right, let's take a look at one more example. Let's go to curve, curve through points again. And let's pick this point and this point over here. Let's once again specify that we want it on the surface and that we want a geodesic curve. So again, now it's going around that dimple once more. So let's hit the repaint so that we no longer have the mesh displayed. And that's how you can create those shortest distance curves on a curved surface. The next one, when you are doing multi-body modeling, you can now use patterns of references as inputs to the Boolean operations. Let me show you what I mean by that. Before I do that, I'm going to drop in a, another body in here. To locate it, I need a coordinate system. So let's create a coordinate system. I'll locate it at the intersection of this axis and the intersection of that surface. One thing that you might notice is that now coordinate systems are three colors. They are red, blue, and green, sort of like the 3D dragger. They're no longer that simple brown color. Let's go to the orientation. I'm going to use this surface to determine the Z direction, and I'll use this surface to determine Y. 
I need Z going downwards. So let's use the flip button. That looks good. Let's click the OK. And let me make sure that my coordinate system display is turned on. I'm going to turn off my notes. I don't need that whole note. And so I'm going to use this coordinate system to bring in some reference geometry. Let's go to copy geometry and let me grab a reference model and I think I've got the part that I want in session. I've got a little helical insert that I grabbed off of McMaster car and let's use the coordinate system method to locate it. That's why I created the coordinate system. I'll click the OK button and we'll bring in the body geometry. I'll just select the geometry from the part. And so everything here looks good. Again, while we're here, you might as well take a moment to look at how the dashboard for the copy geometry feature has been revamped where you have the text for the names of the icons. And so you're sort of like toggling between the different types. And we've got the panel that's automatically open. If you haven't taken a look at the options tab in a while, back in Creo 7.0 with the addition of multi-body modeling, you get all these other additional options. But what I'm showing now so far is stuff that you could still do in Creo Parametric 7.0. So there you can see the insert inside of the hole. If you take a look in the model tree, that is its own separate body. Let's select that coordinate system and then reference pattern it because it was located on a whole instance from a pattern. And now that I pattern the coordinate system, I can reference pattern the body. And so now you can see that here we have a folder. This is pattern three with eight different bodies. And you can see the bodies inside of there. By the way, you'll also notice we have this design items folder. I'll go into more detail about this in the user interface for Creo 8 video, but this is a way that you can access your quilts and bodies from a folder regardless of the regeneration order. So we have our bodies that are patterned inside of here. Let's say I want to do a Boolean operation. We can click on the command. And again, the interface is slightly different now. We are going to do a merge. And for the body to modify, I am going to select the main body in the part for the modifying bodies. Well, let's select the entire pattern of features. And then we can hit the check mark. And there we have the body merge. And you can see the different objects that we have in the model tree. One other thing to point out now, again, I'll go into this in more detail in the user interface video. When you go to your tree filters in the body quilt tab, you have the ability to display consumed bodies and consumed quilts. Let me hit the apply button. By default, these options are not checked, but if you check the options, then you will be able to see, let me hit the apply button, you will be able to see the consumed bodies in your different folders. Oops, let me click OK out of here. And they will appear in a reddish color as opposed to the blue color of the other bodies and geometry that you have in your design items. And the last enhancement that we will take a look at in this video is the ability to display snapshots of quilts and surfaces as they appeared in the past history of your model. So for example, here I have a surface. When I click on it, I can see the rough outline of what it looked like in the past. And a lot of times when you're working on a complex part and you're trying to see those old features, you would either have to use insert mode to roll back the history of the model tree, or you would have to edit definition of the feature in order to see what it looks like. Now you have the ability to display snapshots. Now, right now when I right click on it, here you can see that we have the show snapshot option. So that gives me an idea of what the quilt looked like that was used to start off the model back at this point. Also, when I right click on it, I can also choose to copy the snapshot. So that way I can make a copy of that surface in case I want to use it 
for something else in the model. Let me select that and hide it so that I no longer see it. Let's take a look at a couple more in here. So again, this is what the feature looked like back in the past. Let me show the snapshot. Okay, that's what the surface looked like. Hey, let's take a look at a, another one. Let's grab the one right below it and let's right click and show the snapshot. So there I can see I'm getting an idea of the design intent of how this was built up by showing those different snapshots. And they are going to stay visible while you are working on the model until you hit the repaint button. Then they are no longer going to be visible in the graphics area. Let's take a look at one more example of this. Let me go to a different part. So here we have the exhaust manifold. And here we have the design items folder. You can see the various different quilts. Let me start off by selecting one of my initial surfaces. Here we have a surface that was used at the beginning. Again, you can sort of see the outline. When I right click and hold in this particular situation, we don't have show snapshot. Something that you'll come across in older models is that you have to regenerate the model at least one time before you can be able to see those different snapshots because again, this is a new feature in Creo 8. This model is quite old. Let me just right click and choose insert here and then exit out of insert mode. This is one way that I use to trigger a full regeneration. I got that trick from Martin Neumuller. Let's go to this particular surface. Now we'll right click. Now we have the options to show the snapshot and copy the snapshot. So that way I can see what it looks like. And in addition to using the options from the features in the model tree, you can also do it from quilts in the design items folder. So for example, let me grab, say, this quilt over here. Actually, before I show the snapshot, let me change to a no hidden line mode. A lot of times that makes it easier to see the snapshots if they're taking place in the middle of the part. Let me repaint the screen and then repeat showing the snapshot just so that is not overlapped by the original quilt that I had selected. So that's a way of being able to understand your design intent in the model. And again, if you want to reuse that geometry, you have the ability to copy the snapshot. So there you have it, five enhancements to part modeling in Creo Parametric 8.0. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.